Hey folks! We have talked about the British Museum fairly often on this channel, but it's always been a part of a larger conversation about labor, news, or general museum commentary. It hasn't been the star of a video on my channel, but with the recent news surrounding the British Museum, I think it's about time we change that. Before I catch you up with the theft of thousands of artifacts, resignations, and general politicking surrounding the British Museum, allow me to lay a little bit of groundwork first. First off, hey, I'm Christia. I talk about niche historical topics and museums on this channel, so if that is your thing, maybe hit the subscribe button and stick around. If you check out the links in the description, you will find uh, my Instagram as well as my coffee account. This is a one-man show, it's just me that does everything, so your support is super appreciated. But down there you will also find links relevant to today's conversation as well as sources and the like as well, so check that out. That's kind of the me part of the groundwork I wanted to lay, but let's dive into the British Museum. I am sure that you are probably familiar with this place, but in the off chance that you are not, the British Museum is a very large and very famous museum located in London, England, with millions of artifacts from cultures all around the world held in its collection. Of these millions of artifacts, it is believed that less than 1% is on display to the public. In general, the situation behind the scenes with a lot of museums, especially the bigger ones, is that thousands upon thousands of artifacts will go undocumented and uncatalogued for a very long time, and this can result in items being lost for decades or even centuries before they are ever found again. And this obviously poses a pretty big security risk. Remember that for later. The British Museum, of course, has a very dubious record of how they acquired their massive collection, with many of their items being illegally or unethically acquired. With the rise of the British Empire in the 18th and 19th centuries, a lot of human remains and objects were lifted from the smoking ruins of the places they conquered. Many of these items were then either sold around, ending up in private collections, or ended up in universities or museums like the British Museum. Recently, globally, there has been a big move with the repatriation movement, giving these items back to the communities where they originally came from, the communities that originally created these items. But the British Museum has dug their heels in and refused to repatriate or give most of these items back. And they have some very high profile artifacts like the Rosetta Stone, the Benin Bronzes, and the Parthenon Marbles, just to name a few. They have also been in the news recently for stealing more than just artifacts. I talked about this a few weeks ago in my news wrap up about how they stole a translation of Chinese poetry from a Chinese Canadian translator and did not credit them or pay them, though that has thankfully been resolved though with, I imagine, a lot of stress on the end of the translator. If you would like to learn more about Stuff the British Stole, I highly recommend the podcast called stuff the British stole. I am generally not a podcast person, but I highly recommend this one. Definitely check it out. So now you know the kind of TLDR of what the British Museum is and what they are about. So let's move on to current affairs, specifically everything that has been unfolding in the news in the last couple of weeks. So it started about a month ago when Peter Higgs, who was the curator of Greek collections, was fired or sacked, as they say in England, because he had allegedly been lifting items from the collection under his care and was selling them on eBay. The items were uncatalogued, undocumented, and had not been on recent public display, and they were primarily being kept for academic and research purposes. Peter Higgs had been working at the British Museum for 30 years, but apparently the first suspicious posting to eBay was in 2016. There have been approximately 2,000 items stolen from the British Museum in the last couple of years from this particular person, allegedly, and uh, with these items being undocumented and uncatalogued, though, it is just an approximate, and we may never know just how many items were stolen because they're undocumented. 
Concerns about the sale of these items were actually brought to the museum in 2021 by an antiquities dealer, but the ensuing investigation supposedly found nothing amiss. And it sounds like the museum director, Hartwig Fisher, was a bit rude to the antiquities dealer afterwards, uh, but it just appears that he has since apologized in the wake of everything that's happened. As a result of the fact that these concerns were brought to the director of the museum and the investigation that ensued found nothing amiss, they found diddly squat, Hartwig Fisher has agreed to resign and step down from his position once somebody is found to fulfill that role. There is a lot to talk about and unpack with this situation. A lot of people are very angry for a myriad of very valid reasons. But I think I want to start with one of the most obvious ones. The British Museum is full of stolen stuff. There was a person who was in charge of the care of a collection of stolen stuff, and they stole stuff. The irony is impossible to miss. There is a very high likelihood that these items were stolen from Greece in the first place, and the fact that they have once again been stolen, might cause somebody perhaps less optimistic than myself to lose a little bit of faith in humanity. But a small silver lining is that these thefts have caused a lot of places to ramp up their repatriation efforts once again. For example, Nigeria has once again submitted a proposal for repatriation of the Benin bronzes in the wake of this recent news. Abba Issa Tijani, the director of Nigeria's National Commission for Museums and Monuments, has kind of said it best. It's shocking to hear that the countries and museums that have been telling us that the Benin bronzes would not be secure in Nigeria have thefts happening there. Whether anything will come of this, we don't know. Repatriation is a very convoluted and messy process, even when everybody's on the same page. But when you're dealing with the British Museum or an institution like the British Museum that stomps and pouts whenever you try and take your stuff back, well, it just gets a lot messier. Another aspect of this that I haven't seen anyone else talking about is the staff. And I'm not just talking about Peter Higgs, alleged master thief extraordinaire, but all of the other people who work in the back of house. As we talked about, many of the items that were stolen were not cataloged, they were undocumented, which isn't uncommon in university collections and museums. But do you know what could have prevented this? Come closer. I'll tell you. Come closer. Pay your staff! <laughs> we have heard firsthand on this channel from British Museum staff about how they are not paid a living wage and there's generally not enough staff to keep the back of house of a museum organized and running smoothly. I don't want to give Peter Higgs the benefit of the doubt, but why was a curator of the British Museum selling items on eBay, allegedly? Did he need the money? We know that people further down the ladder than the curator are not being paid enough to live, and it kind of makes me wonder if the curators are being paid enough to live as well. Part of me wonders how much Higgs' salary has increased since he started the museum 30 years ago. But now, because the museum is not willing to pay for the work that needs to be done behind the scenes, whether it's because Higgs was not getting paid enough or just in general the fact that so many of these items are left undocumented because there's not enough people to run the museum, or at the very least they're not paid enough to do so, we have 2,000 items stolen from the museum. It will take decades for these items to be recovered, if they're even recovered at all. Some news articles are focusing on how this is such a loss for the British Museum, but I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people in Greece that are probably feeling heartbroken and powerless to see that their cultural heritage has been stolen from them a second time. In general, I'm actually pretty happy to see the British Museum in the news, and I'm happy to see all of the memes and general public awareness about museums and a lot of their ill-begotten collections of goods. Hardly a few weeks go by before someone on the internet or someone I know personally sends me a meme that looks like this. We all know that the museum has stolen stuff. 
That's not a secret anymore. But there has been mounting pressure from the museum community and, of course, the general public to repatriate a lot of these items. Unfortunately, nothing has changed. The reputation of the British Museum basically says, we have stolen stuff and we are not going to give it back. They have stuck to their guns on this and provided a variety of flimsy excuses for why they will not or cannot uh, return these items to their communities and cultures of origin. Which again, isn't to say that repatriation is easy or simple, but the British Museum hasn't even done the bare minimum. We have heard their excuses about how items can't go back to their countries of origin because their countries are at war or they'll be damaged or they'll be stolen. But now these thefts have allowed those places to flip the script on them a little bit. You refused to give our stuff back because you said it wasn't safe enough. But now your own curators are pinching from the collection, allegedly, for their own personal gain. When I first saw the headline about Hartwig Fisher stepping down from his role as director, I was honestly thrilled. I was thrilled! I thought to myself, maybe now we'll get a new British Museum director who has a very fresh perspective and wants to work with these communities and work towards repatriation. Maybe the British Museum will change and it will set a shining example of how to thoughtfully and ethically curate a museum. I am hoping dearly for this wish to come true.